Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, first time in a long time I've made a video, and uh, today I'm going to talk about collision channels, uh, the channels and the responses, and how you can set those on objects uh, in the scene, as well as give a short tutorial on how to set up a blueprint, uh, how to change the response to a channel in the blueprint. So I'll go ahead and get started, and let's talk really quick about what uh, collision channel is and what a response to that channel is. So I've got here a bunch of objects in a level. None of these are blueprints, they're just objects in a level. Um, I have physics set on all the spheres and I don't have physics set on all of the on these two blocks, but I do have collision set on all of them. Um, so the first thing to talk about here is what a collision channel is and what a collision response is. So the collision channel uh, is what's in this little drop down of object type and it's grayed out now you can get to that if you go to custom and you can change which channel is on um, but I want to be on a block all dynamic so the collision preset is a combination of a channel for this as well as this object's response to each other channel so here's all the other channels laid out and it says what this object's response to an object that is of this channel would be. So for instance, if this object runs into an object that ha is of the channel pawn, it will block it, or it will try to block it. Um, so that's that's the difference between the channels and the response. The channel is what type of object this is, and the response is what it's going to do when it encounters an object of another channel. Um, so I have all of these combinations here of the presets just so you can see how they interact and I'll go ahead and play this we've got a block all dynamic an overlap all dynamic a block all dynamic and an overlap all dynamic over two blocks block all dynamic and overlap all dynamic just so you can see the different cases here so I'll go ahead and play and you can see that three of the four fell through the blocks and two of the four fell through the floor uh, this one was stopped by the block here, and this one was stopped by the floor. So let's talk about what happened really quick. Uh, well, if you look, this guy here has the preset block all dynamic. And this is the block all dynamic here, which if you look, it has the channel of world dynamic here. So you can just cross-reference it and look and say, okay, well, this guy's response to world dynamic is block. And this guy's response to world dynamic is to overlap. Now, interestingly, this guy's response to world dynamic is to block, so you might think that this should have been blocked by this, but in this case, the overlapping behavior of this uh, precedes or takes priority over the blocking behavior of this. So you'll see this guy actually falls through. And conversely, that's the same uh, over here, where um, you might think that the block all dynamic here for or the, yeah, in the block all dynamic, the blocking behavior on the world dynamic would proceed, would uh, block when it hits here, but instead you see that the overlapping behavior uh, takes precedence. So we can see that there's clear priority of overlapping before blocking. And then in this case, these guys, again, have overlapping behavior, so they both fall through the floor, and this guy has blocking behavior, so he stays up on the floor and that's because the floor is in the default uh, setup and default um, I think is block for all response for all channels so that's that's uh, what's going on these are really easily settable just right out of the uh, editor here in the details panel and if you want to do custom you absolutely can and you can set the response that this object will have. But do remember that uh, overlapping and that the priority is in this order. So something that is ignoring, uh, let's say, world dynamic, if I was to set this to ignore world dynamic, and I set this one to block, uh, you know, whatever channel this is on, it doesn't matter because this guy is going to ignore it and that's going to take priority over the blocking. Um, it's also worth mentioning the difference between ignoring and overlapping. Overlapping means that it won't cause a stop in the physics simulation. It, it won't cause an actual, what we would think of as a collision, you know, bang between two objects. 
Um, but if you have overlap on it, will actually generate a hit event and if this is checked and uh, an overlap event if this is checked. So you can actually register those events and use them in blueprints, which is very useful. If it's on ignore, nothing happens. It doesn't fire anything. There's no overlap event. There's no hit event. So let's jump right into the blueprint here. So I've set this up. I can show you what it does. I just set it up with basic input to move back and forth using uh, physics linear velocity and it blocks. And then I set it up so that if you hit space, it changes the collision preset so you can actually now go through without blocking. So again, blocks, blocks, and then if you hit space, it goes through. So I'll show you how to set that up. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete this out. I'm going to leave this in because this is just an object. And we're going to go into this tutorial, create a blueprint class, just an actor. And we'll call this Tor2 Actor. And we're going to come in here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our inputs. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to do uh, loop right. And we'll do post up. up. And we're going to add a Oh, sorry, we need to add a static mesh component. And we'll just set that to a sphere. Doesn't really matter which one. Well, we might possibly need to do. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get this and we're going to set basics linear velocity. There we go. We're going to make a vector. We're going to make that uh, x and we're going to make this z. And I actually think that it's because we're going to be facing the other way. Uh, I'm going to multiply by negative 1. Get the opposite of that. And then just because this is going to be a really weak vector, uh, given that the axes are on negative one to one, I'm going to multiply this by a thousand, just to crank it up a little bit so we can actually get some pretty snappy movement. So if I did all that right, we should be able to come in here. Oops. Set that out there. All right. Should be able to come in here and play. Okay. It shouldn't consume the input. Consume the input. Oh, I bet I didn't crank it. Simulate physics. Input. Should play the controller. Get rid of the breakpoint. All right, there we go. Okay, so we've got that set up. Okay, so pause there for a second uh, because I forgot to enable input, which is why it wasn't working. Uh, picking right back up, 
uh, you have this again multiplied by a thousand and I just have to enable input and then on the static mesh I had to um, simulate physics and then turn off the gravity enable gravity off there now we're here and we have this object and notice that it does that so what we're going to do now is we're going to use this input axis or this uh, jump that I have bound to the space key from a previous tutorial and when it's pressed what we're going to do is we're going to um, grab the static mesh and we're going to set collision response to channel and we're going to say world dynamic because that's what everything we're working with out there um, oops not get set response to channel oh, not get set I don't know why I kept doing that. And for world dynamic, we're going to set it to overlap. Um, and what we need to do here then is add a variable. Uh, overlap. We're going to say get overlap if. So if overlap is already true, then we're going to undo this. We're going to set it back to block. And if it's not true, then we're going to do this. And then we're going to set overlap. If it was true, we're going to set it to false. And if it was false, we're going to set it to true. There we go. And yes. So now, when I'm playing, it should start out with blocking. If I hit space, now we overlap. So hit space again, we're blocking. Oops. Space again, we're in there, hit space, it'll depenetrate with normal collision, depenetration. And so that's that's how you do that. I'm going to cover custom collision channels in the next part, uh, since this was already a little bit long. Um, hopefully that was helpful to you guys, and uh, thanks for watching.